So just relaxing into this moment. Releasing anything that is not of this moment. Anything from the day past, any future thinking, just allowing that to just simply wash away, to cleanse away. As you become more deeply present in the body, the body is always in the present moment. Noticing that inner aliveness of the body. Where do you notice aliveness? Do you notice it in the feet, the legs, the hands? the chest, the abdomen, the head. Just noticing that inner aliveness. And just seeing if you can notice that aliveness throughout the entire body as one whole field of aliveness. And inviting you to notice any other elements of experiencing in this moment, any feelings or sensations, thoughts, just simply noticing, we can call all of this activity or content of experience. Just noticing the activity And then I invite you to ask yourself, where is the source of this experience? And as you ask this question, I invite you to ask it deep within your core so it's not a mental question and answer. You're not looking for a concept or a thought to answer your question. It's a deeper question directly to your own beingness, your own pure presence. So we can trace back experience back to the source of experience. Where is this thought arising from? Where is this sensation arising from? Where is this sound or the experience of hearing arising from? So we 
go from the apparent object of experience to the subject, the pure subject of experience, the origin. So I invite you to ask that question again with that approach of allowing the question to be asked into the silence and allowing the question to dissolve into the silence, not looking for an answer. Where is or what is the source of this experience? may notice your whole system relaxing just naturally maybe a deeper peace arising that's the natural result of the recognition of your own essential being if we really want to know ourself we need to really look at or investigate into on some level in some way, where is my self? What is the most fundamental aspect of what I call myself? Most of us in humanity we identify ourselves through our thoughts, a psychological identity, this sense of me with all these past experiences and memories. And, and yet, thought is an outer extremity of our experience. Thought is always coming and going. Therefore, by definition, it is not stable, it is not consistent, or it is not fundamental about us. It's changing, fleeting, coming and going. So if we really want to know ourselves, we need to reduce are experiencing to what can't be reduced, to what is stable, right? What is foundational? While all thought comes and goes, what isn't coming and going? You, you have a natural sense of being, a natural sense of I, I am, I exist. And it's always been there, always been the same since you were born up until this point a changeless presence while everything else is changing within it. We 
you can even ask yourself the following question again just into the core of your being to the stillness what doesn't come and go about me allowing the question to just simply dissolve We can say that stillness and peace are quite synonymous. And there is this essence of us that is completely still, that is completely stable, ever present. completely at peace already, not agitated. While all agitation is arising in experience, there's something that's not agitated, that just is still, whole, complete, present. To discover this stillness is one of the greatest discoveries we can make as a human being because it is our being. It is our self. It is the root of peace and fulfillment within us. Lasting fulfillment, lasting peace and happiness. So we're all on a journey to discover peace and happiness and fulfillment, whatever we want to call it. But most of us get directed to the outside world, into experiences, feelings, activities, relationships, substances. We're looking for that, for that ultimate fulfillment in these either subtle or more dense objects of experience, extremities of experience. But is it actually possible, if you look into this, is it actually possible to discover everlasting fulfillment, stable fulfillment, stable peace, from something that's not stable. Right? Because all experience comes and goes. It is by definition not stable. Whether that's thought, or thought experiences, feeling experiences, peak experiences, highs, relationships, money, substances. What are we trying to find in all of this? Because we're seeking, 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 seeking. Do we really know what we're seeking for? If we look into this, we're, we can pretty much narrow it down to the seeking of fulfillment or peace or happiness, security, stability. Has it ever worked in any lasting manner? So we have to find what's stable about us. The good news is that it is within us. It can never leave us. It's always here and now.
So it's like a 180 degree turn, looking for fulfillment, seeking for fulfillment in the outside world or in seeming objects of experience, turning around to the source of experience. Where is, what is the origin of experiencing? And that, the farther we relax into that, rest into that, the more we discover the peace that always is, the peace that passeth all understanding. It cannot be conceived through conceptual understanding. It's before it. It is you. It is your essential being. That's the only aspect of experiencing that is actually stable. The one who is experiencing. Just like the weather needs the sky, the stable, clear, open sky in order to be, as the weather comes and goes, the sky simply is. It just is. The weather doesn't damage the sky. A lightning bolt doesn't scratch the sky. So too, no experience ever scratches the infinite space of your being, the infinite presence the eternal presence, the timeless presence that all time and space appears within and as a manifestation of or an appearance of, an emanation of all thoughts, feelings, sensations announcing the fact of stable being announcing that there's something here that does not come and go. The appearance and the experience of time announcing timelessness is here. The experience of not being present, of being absent, Announcing presence is here. For if presence wasn't here, if a knowing conscious presence, ever present presence, wasn't here, how could the experience of absence be known, be experienced? If clarity wasn't always here, the clear sky wasn't always here. How could confusion be known? You're clear that there's confusion when there's confusion, right? So there's a deeper essence. A clear essence, even when seems thing, things seem completely unclear. There's a clear essence, knowing, experiencing, seeing, unclarity, confusion, anxiety, In the 
midst of total agitation. There's something deeper at the origin of your experience that is completely unagitated. So a resolution for agitation, anxiety, the true solution is to find that which is at the basis of the agitation, is at the basis of the anxiety. That which stably is, that which is still, always still about you. Another way of saying that is that which is not agitated, or that which is already at peace. That is at the core of every human being, no matter what sect, culture, society, race, beliefs. This is fundamental to every human being. It's just the simple mechanics of experiencing. We can all say, I exist, or have the experience of existing. There's something about us that always is here and now. Yes, always. So, the issue is that we aren't familiar with this. It's so simple it gets overlooked. It's so close and so intimate. It's beyond close. And it's so intimate it gets overlooked. Because it is what is looking. So this isn't, again, about a belief structure or anything of a conceptual state or something that's exclusive to certain beings. It's the nature of all of our experience. It's so simple. And the more we become familiar with this, the more we come to know ourself. The more we come to know and experience peace. It doesn't mean that there won't still be experiencing and things and experiences that arise that are just completely easy to go through, but there is this stable being that is recognized. That's already always here. It's always here. It can't not be here. Otherwise, there would be a ceasing in existence. You would cease to exist if you weren't being, right? If there wasn't life, there would be no life. So it's like tracing the movie that's projected onto the screen and all the changing scenes, tracing that movie or the appearance 
back to the source of its appearance, which is the light. And the light just is, is just projecting, never changing itself, just projecting through whatever is in front of it, and then it makes it appear on the screen and brings it to life. But the light at its core, at its core never actually changes, it just is. And yet, all appearances, all changing appearances, are an emanation of it. There isn't a separation between the source or origin of experience and the display of experience. It's an, you could say it's like an emanation. So we can trace it, our experience back to the origin, back to the source within us. So this is my invitation for today and really always is to just continue to make this turnaround, to continue to inquire into what is at the source of my experience. It can be very easy. We've been trained and conditioned to focus exclusively outwardly. And it's no wonder that we're so insecure and we're so unstable because at that level of experiencing, it's completely insecure. It's completely unstable. It just is that way, right? Because it's always changing. It's always coming and going. So if we're, if our identity is at that level of our experiencing, then our identity is also coming and going. It's unstable, it's constantly changing, insecure, right? So as we relax our identity and rest back into the presence, the stable beingness, the I, the true I, not the I thought, but the just the simple raw experience of I, or I am, I exist, before there is a label that gets put on to I am, or I exist, right? Like I am this, or I am that. But the I am that is right at the core of our being. It's always conscious, it's always aware, it's always knowing experience giving life to experience, bringing the light of consciousness so that all thoughts can be noticed, realized, brought to life. So again, that I am is completely stable. It's always here. That being that you are is always here, ever present. And as we start to familiarize ourselves again with that, we also realize our wholeness that wholeness that we're all searching for, profoundly searching for, and rightly so. Because again, we've been identified with all these aspects that are completely scattered, changing, seemingly not whole. So we, we rest back into that sense of being, we also rest back into that sense of wholeness, and it restores wholeness. It starts to restore wholeness. 
So that's another part of this process is becoming adept at being present or being in your beingness, being conscious of being, of presence. And then meeting, being honest about all those things within us that are unconscious, bringing all that is unconscious into consciousness. Because those are what those patterns are what pull us out of presence and and create distorted identities of a separate self due to identification with thought or a psychological me. And so as we come back to where those experiences arise from and meet them from that space of loving presence, it brings ourself back to wholeness, which already is the case, but it's not our experience. I invite you to just notice your body, notice your spine. So again, another extension of this invitation is next time you maybe feel anxious or agitated or something like this, tendency can be to look for something to distract you from the anxiety or the agitation or to escape it, whether that is a certain other feeling or experience or substance or activity. Just notice the agitation and then inquire into what isn't agitated about me? What isn't anxious about me? Or where is the source of this experience? And allowing that question again to, to drop very deep so to speak, inside of you. So not just asking it in the head and looking for an answer in the head, but you know how to do this intuitively. Just asking it deep, allowing that question to just dissolve into your presence. It doesn't mean that the agitation will necessarily go away or the anxiety will go away. It may, a lot of the times it will, if you actually touch the origin or you directly experience that origin, that which is completely still, stable, not agitated, ever present, But it does mean that you'll be in a much better position to relate to it, to actually respond to it instead of react to it from a patterned position of needing to escape or needing to fix or um, numb It is the greatest solution for everything because we can say actually all issues, all suffering, all problems arise out of this original problem of ignorance of our, our true essence, our own being. And we create these 
thought identities, psychological identities of a separate me from life, separate from God or the source, from simply we could just say life itself, separate from each other, separate from nature. And so our entire lives revolve around this me center which is very sufferable. And then creates, relates, lives in a way that is very divisive and that is, can cause a lot of havoc. And we see this playing out all over the world today. So by coming to understand this deeper and deeper, to really come to recognize that this is the solution to come home to ourself to come home to our presence to come home to the present moment it is the ultimate solution the ultimate medicine the more we understand that the more we actually subtract our incessant focus or our consciousness that's so focused on the mind stuff and the, the seeking, seeking, seeking in the external, then we simply turn that around into the being, into the, the stable presence, into the origin of experience. because we've come to understand that that's where the solution is. That's, this is home. This is peace. This is our, the, the space from which our greatest benefit, our greatest love, our greatest contribution, our greatest generosity and kindness just innately flows from. When enough of us embody this, realize and embody this, we will see a completely different world externally, seemingly externally. I love you all, and I wish you a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day and life and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.